Today is a beautiful day for science. Currently, we have an escalation on our forward-facing, earth-facing region. Has my interest for a couple of reasons. And uh, one in particular is I want to see if it is now impacting the... Uh, there we go. See if it's now impacting the area behind on the back end of that area because that's where all the dense loops are and that's where I'm seeing the flaring at so I'm thinking that we might start seeing an escalation and further increase of the amount of flares possibly even more surface changes so this region could be coming more active as it comes across let's look at uh, the NOAA subnautic map first to see what they're calling these regions so we know exactly what we're talking about. And the beautiful work they do here at NOAA. And we have... 3685 is the leading. So 3686 is the one they titled behind it. I was wondering. Alright, so 3685 and 3686. Alright. Hopefully my mind doesn't forget that too quickly. <laughs> Now let's take a quick look at the HMIBC and see how that has been developing as the past 48 hours approximately. Now that northern area in the center has been moving northward and the leading negative has been strengthening. But it's more the positive northward motion that has my attention. see here. It's not very quick, but it's happening. Uh, huh. Alright. Let's look at the latest. It's not good enough for me. I want to see what it looks like now. Get my keyboard here. HMIBC there it is. All right. <laughs> All right. And that's what I'm looking for right there. Okay, so... It's, it's barely moving, but it's moving. That's a very strong positive area right there. That's going to start appealing to that uh, leading edge of 3685. And... We're going to probably start seeing a little bit of a uh, uniformity forming on that leading 3684. So, where's my little little man? There we go. So, 3684 here. This large positive region has been moving slightly northward, extremely slowly, but still moving nonetheless. And we're seeing surface changes on 3684's leading negative field here. Uh, I think a lot of that has to do with uniformity for starting to form, and these are going to start combining their, their force and be less spread out. Good chance that that's going to be a small player, as there's the density, once again, in this area is not very high. So there's not as much chance of those accidental high fives, where you see a flare hit another flare, or on a flare, a magnetic field line hit another magnetic field line, causing a flare. However, 3685, this region behind it, is going to be the big reason why we start seeing a lot of activity from what I've been looking at because as this moves northward it's going to be appealing the negative energy from here and this has a lot of uh, well, a much greater amount of density of loops so flaring will most likely be contrib uh, the contribution of flares is most likely going to be coming from here and uh, because the negative field for 3685 is very spread out and very weak so it's going to be pretty easy to steal away those loops. 3685 is not a very uniformed uh, region, though very dense. So these loops are going to be easy to destabilize and incite those flares to occur. So let's take a look at 131, because we have a small escalation now, just a very small one. So let's see class range. 
and uh, we can see where some of those hotter points are and again yes that's exactly where it's at uh, this right here and you can see once again what I was talking about it's it's just not very dense in this area here but here you gotta have a uh, very dense amount of uh, plasma and magnetic field lines that are sprawled all throughout those weak positive uh, inductions back in or connections back in and uh, so let's take a look at 171 looking at the loops more specifically and again we can see that so the negative leading for 3685 has loops going in every direction to all the weak fields while this one has a whole bunch of space in many different areas yeah so yeah I'm expecting a little more from it nothing too significant at least yet but this could end up getting more significant as time goes depending on how it reacts but this is definitely from the very beginning you could tell this was our flare player because before it was, the surface was in view the loop formations themselves were quite uh, erratic and had a lot of motion in them and uh, while the flares are not very uh, consistent it, it does show that that motion has not slowed down and there's a lot of restructuring that's going on with the leading region of 3684 and now 3685's contribution with a higher density of uh, loops and a <laughs> and a, uh, a weak positive field that uh, it's connected to that could end up becoming a pretty good player for uh, maybe even start seeing some uh, high M class flares. I'm not seeing a whole lot of plasma. You know, I get filaments and prominences in this area. Let's take a look at 304 so we can be more uh, precise and accurate about that. Yeah, there's not a whole lot. We do have some crossover areas right here here but it's not extremely dense like we see a lot of regions that are highly active that give us a lot of solar storms so there's a good chance that we don't see a lot of uh, solar storm activity from these events this could just be a lot of clean flares as I like to call it where it's a flare without a solar storm launched so you know, a flare is just where the magnetic field lines are crossing and a significant amount of frequency of light energy that travels at the speed of light occurs the CME the solar storm is a whole separate event that can be caused by a flare that uh, is the plasma displacement from the chronomass, eject uh, chronomass ejection that's launched into space and becomes an ICME, and that's our solar storm, interplanetary chronomass ejection. So this right here, that's our big player at the moment. It does not have a lot of plasma displacement available, but that's that could change very quickly. It could take a mere 24 hours, and we could start seeing a lot of buildup. But uh, as of right now, it's been pretty consistent in the, uh, the low end there. You know, if we take a look at 193, and that's focusing more again on the uh, corona. And we can see to the south of there is a little corona hole, nothing too big. And, but uh, once again, the density of the loops is weaker in the, the Ford with 3684. And they're uh, much more abundant and dense in 3685's area. So 3685 is going to be our contributor to the flares all because of the northward motion of the 3684's positive area moving and uh, attracting those weak field connections into its strong field connection. That's something I've been keeping an eye on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So thoughts on the fly, just a little quick update for those watching live. And uh, you know what's going on. And, uh, yeah. Beautiful yet uh, interesting activity. <laughs> uh, that's it. Cheers and science on.